satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. When I quit in 2018, maybe the year prior to that, I had switched from drinking hard drinks like rum, vodka, etc. to beer and wine. Now I'm sure biologically, that's not much of a difference yeah, it's because the, same. the active thing is still alcohol. Yeah. Uh, but what I remember again, this is very bro logic here. It probably just psychologically gave me that little bit of assistance. Uh, I felt like I was taking one step out of that world of alcohol psychologically. This is just what worked for me. It may work for some people listening to this and may not. My goal was to leave alcohol, but not uh, leave it cold turkey <laughs> uh, because that might be difficult for some people. It might because if you are, if you have alcohol use disorder and severe dependence on alcohol, going cold turkey might actually precipitate a lot of other problems like alcohol withdrawal and alcohol withdrawal seizures and something known as delirium tremens, which is actually a most severe form of alcohol withdrawal, which is life threatening. And patients can also develop something known as Wernicke's encephalopathy, which means that if you are a chronic alcohol user, your vitamin uh, B1, that is by thiamine, a particular vitamin, B vitamin called thiamine, is depleted in your body. And with that depletion, you get a brain failure. That is known as Wernicke's encephalopathy. And without giving high dose of thiamine, you cannot reverse it. And it's life-threatening. So this dude who was drinking two liters and all, you can't just tell him the next day. No, but we can't. No, so we can, but then we'll have to give medications that will prevent all of this. So we mm. put them on anti seizure medications. We'll put them on medications that will help them with their sleep, help them with their thoughts, reduce anxiety, reduce depression. And we do this in a very calculated way, in a way that it does not harm them also. Because not every liver patient can actually take every medicine possible. We have to be very safe we have to play very safe when it comes to medicating uh, liver disease, advanced liver disease patients. Little non-alcohol related question in this point. Yeah. Do you get a lot of steroid user patients whose livers have been affected? By Actually, liver? in Kerala, we don't. But in Punjab, my colleagues see a lot of them. A lot. So if you look at uh, acute liver injury, uh, which is off topic from this, what we're talking. Acute liver injury means you have healthy livers and good livers and suddenly it becomes bad. Your liver function becomes bad. A chronic liver injury is because of chronic alcohol use, developed cirrhosis and things like that. So one of the commonest causes for acute liver injury, if you look at Kerala, um, is acute hepatitis A, the viral infection. But in Punjab, uh, my colleagues are seeing injection uh, steroid use, that is anabolic steroid use, which actually causes severe liver injury. But thankfully, fortunately, it is reversible. So when you stop that and provide them supportive care, it reverses. Um... You know, there's something called post-steroid therapy or post-anabolic therapy. Basically, after your steroid cycle, you're supposed to take a bunch of medicines to reduce the bad effects of steroids. And that's where the expensive steroid use separates itself from cheap steroid use. Okay, I have not heard about this, but I think uh, a lot of people do actually take supplements to reduce side effects of steroids. Yes, it is true. Post-cycle therapy. Okay. And uh, even during your steroid cycle, uh, if you're doing it under the guidance of like a medico and yeah. there are doctors. Uh, there are doctors. Um, I know about them. A lot of them. Yeah. Who safely help you with anabolics. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we're promoting anabolic steroids. Yeah. No, no, absolutely not. But anabolic steroids are very bad for the liver. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a, when, you know, when you boil down that problem of anabolic steroids, uh, unless you're a competitive bodybuilder and you, your profession requires you to take it, which yeah. again, I'm not fully for, but then who am I? You know, that's yeah. their world. Yeah. Uh, most people who take anabolic steroids uh, in the modern day don't really need to take anabolic steroids. Hmm. I think there are only three professions where there is sort of a justification, which is bodybuilding, like competitive bodybuilding, yeah. uh, actors and models. Because they're basically saying they were all... Yeah. Many of my actor friends like are taking steroids and I okay. see how it affects them psychologically also. Yeah. Um, because it's it's not something naturally that your body wants. Yeah. Because you have anabolic and catabolic uh, hormones and chemicals and all inside your body. But then doing it from an additional point of view, just to have that supra physiological mm. effect, that's not uh, recommended. Yeah. Um, I mean, no matter what you say or no matter what I say, there will still be I people know. who will do steroids. There will still be people drinking on weekends. There will still be people who will be drinking. <laughs> Which is why I actually want to have a bit of a bro conversation also. Yeah. Okay. Like, yes, you're a doctor, but you're also just a normal guy with some normal friends. Yeah. Fair to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
when my friends and so many of my friends ask me how i quit alcohol because they are in that same boat they my age now they seeing their body slowing down and they like dude good you stopped at 25 i am really trying to stop right now but where do i begin my only input to them is do this wine and beer thing i did it worked for me see if it can work for you then slowly reduce to one of them and then slowly cut it off if you don't want to reduce it overnight but your mind should be so strong to do that cut off so that does not actually work uh, with everyone in the real scenario i mean especially the people i i treat so i treat a lot of patients with alcohol use disorder who are with and without liver disease so basically it's not like everybody who drinks alcohol will get a liver disease uh, and it's very important to mention this also it's not uh, that everyone who drinks heavily will get alcohol liver disease it is also true that people who occasionally drink get alcohol liver disease and it is also true that uh, everybody who drinks alcohol uh, excessively may not have any issues at all you know i mean uh, that is one of the commonest arguments that uh, people bring under my post on alcohol liver disease saying that you know they have had an uncle who was drinking till 90 and he's fine <laughs> and he has no cancer so i'll tell them i had an uncle who did not wear a seat belt and survived a car crash so we don't advise people to not wear seat belts everybody has to wear a seat belt so it's the same with alcohol so it's not because one person escaped it everybody can escape it so we can have liver disease with low dose of alcohol we can have liver disease with high dose of alcohol but we can also have no liver disease even in heavy consumers and that is just because of their genetic profile so there are uh, people who have some special set of genes which protects them from bad effects of alcohol so there is a gene called aldehyde dehydrogenase uh, that gene's name is aldehyde de dehydrogenase a mutation or a change in that particular gene in some people protects them from uh, ill effects of alcohol on the liver so that particular gene is very common in the asian population in chinese so initially this particular phenomenon was known as oriental flush syndrome mm, where the face becomes red exactly uh -huh. so if they take little bit of alcohol because the alcohol is metabolized so fast in their bodies you get the side effects drastically of that alcohol uh, intoxication with even little bit of alcohol so what can they can't drink more so because they can't drink more the liver is protected so that is one case the other cases they have specific genes which actually protects them from advanced liver developing advanced liver disease in alcohol users but the problem is that we are yet to identify actual liver protecting genes when it comes to substance abuse and like alcohol use disorders because that group is a small group mm. so we can't we can't uh, extrapolate that group and then generalize them to the community they are they are like these uh, characters that we see on tv superhumans and all that you know there are no superhumans in real life so you don't you you just don't wear a cape and jump off a building thinking that you know you can fly you don't do that so in, even with alcohol that is the advice so better not to take even though there are people who don't develop advanced liver disease with alcohol this is the scientific version of asians of shit capacities <laughs> <laughs> you you said that scientific. this is what it is yeah so the term now oriental flush syndrome is now changed because it has a racist feel to it oriental means you know it's only in in asians and also now it's known as alcohol flush syndrome mm. so that name is also changed and this actually protects them which is actually good for them they can't drink alcohol If you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip.